when I was a child, I used to write a diary and I would describe my day in minute detail, you know, who, who, I, who I saw and what they were wearing and what they said. And it's been a long time since I wrote that kind of a diary like I did when I was small, but I do still record moments that I see. And I record moments like these. A woman steps out of her house in Camberwell wearing a fabulous leopard print cat suit and empties her small recycling bin into the big one. A man steps on a loose paving stone and it seesaws underfoot with the soft sloshing sound of collected rainwater. Little boy in the park to me, I found something so beautiful. Me, you did? What is it? Little boy, a leaf. Don't forget to see them. Being recorded. On June the 18th, 2013, I, I began posting these moments online, just as somewhere to put them really. And the first one I posted was sitting in my quiet nighttime garden by the softly soothing glow of my little solar lamp. Lovely. And I got a few responses to it, not many, because I didn't really have any followers at the time, it was just a few friends. But I kept, I kept noticing these moments and posting them online anyway, moments like these ones. A woman in an old cardigan walks around an estate in Clapton, tenderly gathering stinging nettles into a bag with leather gloved hands. The lights of a late night laundrette shine onto a woman as she unloads washing from one of the huge metal machines. Man on the tube, I'm tired. His wife, oh, we're all tired, Brian. And slowly people started to read them and respond to them and they started to, to follow what I was doing. And now I've got over 27,000 people reading them from all over the world. They check in some of them daily and they read a few and they, they tell me that they make them feel calm or they give them a, a break from the stresses of everyday life. I write in note form in lots of tiny notebooks and they're kind of small enough to fit in my pocket. I'll just share my screen with you now. So as you can see, they start out very neat, um, my notebooks, and then as they come in and out of my pockets and get more rain soaked and, and, I, and I rush with my writing and they get a bit more disordered looking. So back on June the 16th, 2014, I posted this observation. A woman on the tube, her beautiful silver hair cascading in waves over her vivid red cape, nods to herself as she reads a book about tigers. And an artist, Welbeck Kane, sent me this drawing of it. And, you know, he didn't send it because um, I paid him or because uh, he'd get seen because I had loads of followers because I didn't really, I didn't ask him to do it. He just do it because he wanted to respond to what I've written. Uh, and it's beautiful. It's not what she looked like, but it's, it's the essence of her. And then I was sent another illustration of my observations and another and another, and none of the artists knew that anyone else was doing that. And I started collecting these illustrations of my observations together. Now, am I still sharing my screen? Let's see. Not, not at the moment, Miranda. Let me go back to show you. So there she is, right? Yes, yeah, we can see now. Yeah, yeah. and this is the, the next one I was sent. A little boy on the tube is so worried about his soft toy lion falling on the floor that he is saying to him, hold on tight, Sycamore Jones. A woman in a silk shirt printed with a pattern of knives and forks arranges a long blonde wig on a man in a brightly lit chip shop, badly. Woman on her phone on the train, the landlord says no pets, but they can't mean rabbits, can they? I mean, Jeremy's family. Me to a little boy beside me in a cafe who's wearing a yellow coat. Nice coat. Little boy, thank you. It means when night comes, I can hide as a star. Love that one. So in January last year, I was contacted by Kira Jamieson from Icon Books, and she wanted to know if I thought these observations could make a book, and I did. You know, I was brimming over with ideas about how to make a book. 
by this point I had over 40,000 observations and I downloaded my archive and I began to read them all and it took weeks and eventually I realized that from the clothes people were wearing and what they were saying and what the weather was like each piece often had a sense of the time of year to give you some examples man on Finsbury Park how was the New Year's Eve party woman I fell in love with a man with a sequined beard a little girl walks through Green Park carrying a hot waffle with chocolate sauce that her dad has just bought her. She blows on it to cool it down and her breath makes clouds of icy white in the cold air. Woman on the bus, I love this time of year. You can legitimately eat three hot cross buns for breakfast. People move slowly through the city heat. A storm is coming. So we decided that the book would be set over a year and I trimmed thousands of observations down to, let me just show you, hundreds. And I spread the ones that made the cut, I made sort of piles of them, you know, and, and they were like snow drifts. And sometimes my cat or my three-year-old or my husband would run through them and I'd have to start that section again. And they were just sort of all over the desk and the floor and everything. And as you can see, basically I have to, I have to work with paper that's, that's the way I think. I can't do everything through a screen. I need to get the pieces of paper and move them around like a jigsaw until, until they fit. And I decided to call the book The Year I Stopped to Notice. And the beautiful cover is by an artist, Tara and Branch. In the meantime, so we're, we're trying to decide as well as what's in the book in terms of writing, we're trying to decide who's going to do the illustrations. And so the publisher had a few suggestions in mind, but I was really keen to use one of the artists that had already been sending in their pictures to me because it felt like it was in the spirit of the, the spontaneity, you know, which, which created the book in the first place. So I showed the team nine options um, from these hundreds of, of images and they chose Lucy Power to do the, the paintings in the book. And her work is perfect. She's got an incredible eye for depth and detail. You know, there's so much to notice in what she does. I'll show you some of them. A woman on the tube in a mint green jumper drinks a massive cup of coffee. The expression on her bird-like face of waiting for it to kick in. On a quiet street, a mattress rests like an old boat washed ashore. It's cargo, a broken radiator, some tangled fairy lights and five chips. A hairdresser in Islington washes the hair of a client. as She stares out of the salon window with a faraway gaze, soap suds foaming up her arms like the encroaching tide. A door opens onto a dark alley and a man in chef's white steps out, does a series of rather elaborate yoga poses and then heads back in. Two men sit outside a cafe in the dark, autumn leaves swirling around them. One man reaches, oh, they're playing chess. One man rests his head in his palm and the other reaches for a piece. So during a workshop, that I led a writing workshop, someone raised the question of the darker stuff that happens and whether or not we should be giving that our attention. And it's a really good question. I see darkness, I live in the world, I'm not pretending that it's not there. But when I decide what to share online, I am careful. I am mindful of its impact. And the care part is key because I'm writing about real people and real events and often in real time. So it's important that I treat those people with, you know, respect because there's always the chance that you could recognize yourself or you could recognize someone, you know, so I have to focus to get the details right. I still spend a huge amount of my time lost in thought or trapped between the world and my phone. But I also make time whenever I can to to stop and notice because it helps me to cope with this overwhelming world. So I'm going to open the book now and read you some extracts. I'll just check with Michael how long you want me to read for, because I'm not sure um, whether we're... We're, we're, we're fine then. Yeah. Fine, Miranda, and yes, yeah, just read as many as you'd like. Great. And then it'll be lovely afterwards to hear some reflections from uh, from the carers who are with us today on, um, you know, things that, uh, that you, you have... Um, noticed as well and uh, I think particularly during the pandemic there was a lot of talk about people noticing um, the nature around them um, more than they did 
did before. And uh, so, yes, it would be lovely to hear some reflections from the carers here. But yes, go, go ahead, Miranda, please. Um, so this is, I'm just going to start from the beginning. This is January. And I'll just read a bit of it. Little girl on the bus. Nice notebook. Me. Thanks. Little girl. Is it a diary? Me. I write about things I see. Little girl. Like me. Me. Exactly. Little girl. Cool. A man in dirty overalls reaches into the window display of a locksmith's to carefully remove an old glittery plastic Santa for another year. A cat at the window of a house watches the rain fall outside, its large mustard yellow eyes bright against gray fur. Two women in hijab chat and laugh, the tips of their white trainers dancing closer together with the swaying of the train. Frost best befriends the grass in the park as afternoon light appears above a line of trees. On a radio somewhere, the circle game by Joni Mitchell plays. In a churchyard in Hackney, moss grows on the gravestones. The last of the sun hits a leafless tree and a pigeon settles with a small coo. A man on the tube resting his chin on his closed fist like the thinker seems in deep contemplation and then gently, he begins to snore. Little boy on the train, mama, his mum, yeah? Little boy, I never see you brush your hair. His mum, I do a lot of things you don't see. Pause, little boy, like flying. That's just a bit of January. Fantastic, thank you, Miranda. Um, really great to hear how you came to write the book. And yeah, I really like the photos of all the little clippings you got of all lined up and, and then trying to order all those and, and sort them out. How, how many thousand did you say you had sent? So it was 40,000 of the pieces. And then I didn't print out 40,000. I, I got those 40,000 down to a certain number and then started printing those out. Um, and I think it was partly because of the pandemic that I had, you know, we were all stuck at home and I had this opportunity to kind of cover the floor in, in writing and move it around in a way that I don't know that I would fit into my life right now. Mm. Great, thanks. And, and yes, it does seem you've kind of articulated, I think, what a lot of people do notice if you're sitting on the bus and you see something uh, unusual and you, oh, put that, or you hear something, a, a snippet of a conversation and then it just slips into the past, but you, you've kind of captured those little snippets and collected them all. And uh, yeah, really lovely. And great. So um, Miranda, should we, should we move on to the next um, stage? Yes. Yeah. That's the exercise, isn't it? That's right. Yes, that would be lovely. Yeah. Bro, does anybody not have a piece of paper and a pen? You raise your hand. Can anyone see any hands up? No? So everyone's ready to write? Yeah. Great, no pressure. I mean, this isn't like fancy writing. It's just note-taking, really. <laughs> I've just seen Celia's gone to get something, I think. Okay, let's start anyway, because I can see it's coming back. Lovely, so yeah, this is a, a mindful writing exercise, essentially. I'm going to get my notebook as well because I'm going to join in this time. <laughs> so in a moment, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to look around the space that you're in. And when you're looking at it, I want you to find something to observe. And do that using any of your senses that you have available to you. So what you can potentially see, hear, taste, smell or touch. But if any of you have any sense differences, then just use whatever works for you. I'll set the timer for two minutes. And in that time, I want you to settle on what you're observing. You know, I can see the really bright light from my lamp. I can see half a cold coffee in my cup. Um, I feel a bit cold maybe, or, or I feel a bit warm depending on how you're feeling. So you can observe yourself or you can observe anything in your environment. And then just jot down some words about it. And just single words like light, coffee, half full, you know, chilly. Um, so it's not a finished piece, it's not something written, it's just like a shopping list of words. 
and write about things that you're willing to share with the group. So, so if you observe something you don't want to put in the group chat later, then don't do that. Just, just observe things that you're happy to, to share. So I'm going to set the time out for two minutes in a second. Has anyone got any questions before we start? Just going to look in the chat. Great, okay. So let me get my timer on. So two minutes, a list of words about your environment. And go. Okay, so 20 seconds left. Okay. Has my alarm gone off? Does anyone need any extra time? Okay. So you've got your notes, which is always, almost always how I start. And I'm gonna give you five minutes now to turn these notes into an observation. And when I say an observation, I don't mean, um, I just mean something that's not notes anymore. So it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could be just a description or it could be a poem or it could be a collection of sentences that work together. So it can be just something very simple. Um, this is one I wrote the other day. My cat sits beside me on the arm of the sofa. Her tortoise shell colors are beautiful against the green fabric. Her feet are disappeared under her for warmth. She's not a lap cat. This is her version of a hug. And depending on how you work, you can polish this up so that it sounds really, you know, pretty or whatever you want it to sound dark, whatever you want it to sound. Um, or you can just have some sentences simply describing what you've noticed. And I work in both ways. I think there's a, a benefit to both approaches. So I'm going to set the timer for five minutes so that you don't overthink it. <laughs> and at the end, you should have one or a few moments described. OK, any questions before we do that? Great, OK, I'm going to set the timer for five minutes as soon as I have done one second. Okay, let's go.
Okay, so my alarm's just gone off. Does anyone need any more time? I had a message from Rhonda saying that she'd missed the five minute instruction, but it looks like maybe she's had to head off now. Is that right? Um, um, yes, I think we're all in yeah, this to head off, yeah. Okay, so the next part of this is to write your observation, I'll add mine as well, into the chat box uh, and just, yeah, type it in and then the next person types it in in no particular order and then I'll read them all out at the end. So is everyone able to write in the chat box okay? Great. Sorry, I'm muted. Is anyone um, still waiting to write? Can't seem to see everyone here. So Michael, can you see anyone with their hand up who's waiting to write? Um, no, I, I can't actually, Miranda, no. I think the right. it's quite a few been posted already. Yeah, it's wonderful. Okay, so I'm, what I'm gonna do now is just read these out in a row. She rolls her sleeves up. Clothes drying on the line, dangling, flapping in the breeze, bright and colourful stripes in the sun, free yet pegged down. Cosy warm blue blanket and sound of dog snoring. Sunlight and shadow dance together as the gentle breeze plays its tune for the diaphanous willow tree. Damp flags outside, damp lawn, silence in here but not quite, my phone buzzes. A distant plane drones overhead. Acorn the guinea pig is scratching in his cage. The red bag of chocolates rests on the table. The wrapper is shiny with a big bag on the label. Its contents are teasing me to try. I'm ignoring it, but I keep seeing it out of the corner of my eye. Shawl on an old brown sofa. Lego, pencils and drawings on the floor. A tin of custard creams and chocolates. Pictures on blue wall makes my home beautiful overall. On my desk, my noise cancelling headphones lie, large and yellow and black like an insect. Ivy presses against the window outside. Spiders have made a home amongst the leaves. Webs hang like Halloween decorations in the fading sun. Books are knowledge as I pick up a book and look at each spine, I am transported on a journey of discovery. Shall I journey with Monty Don visiting? 80 80 gardens of the world or the country diary of an Edwardian lady and look at the artwork. I wish I could pick up a book and there I have read it. I wonder where my next adventure will be, perhaps going back in time, 
the magic faraway tree. Let the next adventure begin. Blue sky with white clouds and sunshine through my window. Trees changing color in the distance with muffled sound of cars passing. Time standing still. Time to pause. Time to think. A small white and gray pebble sitting on my desk. I pick it up. It's cold and light to hold. It's both smooth and textured. As I hold it in my palm, it begins to feel warmer. A fresh green plant on the table, a smell of coffee, sunshine outside with the washing waving, dog barking, doorbell ringing. Moving hands, a counterpoint, a peacefully dozing cat, just slightly envious. So that, I mean, I, I don't know if you can get the sense that I, I, it's so beautiful. And everybody's just sitting in their house or their office or their room or somebody else's house, wherever they are. And they're just describing the tiny little things. And yet it's trans completely transporting. Every single one is a little gem of time and space and I said peculiarity, but I mean specificity. Anyway, thank you so much. It shows us, it shows you that we all, you know, we all share being human and lots of things were observed more than once. But also we all come from, from our own space. Every time we, you join a Zoom call or a meeting or even just a conversation with someone, they're coming from their own world. You know, we've got so much going on, even in the small things. Thank you. I think Michael's probably gonna save that as well. So we have a record of what was written. But Michael, were you saying we've run out of time? Or do you want a tiny bit more reading? We, 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 we have actually uh, come <laughs> to the end of the session. Uh, It'd be lovely to carry on for another half an hour. Um, but yeah, Miranda, thank you yeah. so much for a, a wonderful session. Great way to spend our lunchtime when, when, uh, and how much between us, all the creativity and all those, uh, amazing, yeah, as you say, amazing observations, given we're all just sitting on, sitting in our kitchens or living rooms. And uh, um, so really great to see you, Miranda, again. And uh, yeah, well, hope, hopefully we'll have you back for another session there. That will be lovely.